a revolution digest where businesses get smarter. I'm Jesslyn. And I'm Elias. Together, we show you how AI drives real results. And because the future isn't waiting, let's dive right in. What does it take to redefine tech and lead with ethics in a fast-moving world? That is the question for today's episode. And now let's welcome our guest speaker for today, Ms. Rose Junil. Ms. Rose, thank you for being here. Can you please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Thanks for having me. Yes, I am a entrepreneur and a creative. Um, I have a consulting practice. I also do a lot of work in the space of AI ethics, governance, and safety. And I sit on a couple of boards as well. And so I'm somebody who has what you would consider a portfolio career and do a few different things in my in my time. Thank you for that introduction. And you talk about, you know, you're an entrepreneur, so and you also have a nonprofit, you're in the ethics side. So what are the ethical challenges would you say is unique to starts up startups as they scale their operations? That's a great question. I think when you're in a startup and your resources are limited, you really have to be selective about where you're focusing your time, your money, and and other resources. Um, and so often ethics can take a back seat or not really be considered. And that can present a wide range of challenges, but I think that's the reality. And so something that I think the industry can do or the market can do is encourage ethics to be a conversation earlier in the cycle of a student, whether it is organizationally or from a technical perspective. Thank you very much. So um, talking about um, inequalities and everything, in what specific ways do you think technology can be both the solution and a contributing factor to systemic inequities? And how do you navigate this duality? That's a great question. Given the quick and, and rapid way that technology is changing, um, there are, of course, lots of opportunities that we can capitalize on, but there's also kind of these risks um, and things that we have to sort of give up in order to make use and to, to realize the benefits of, of technology. There's this idea that we can use emerging technologies to help us solve some of the largest um, concerns and issues in our world. And so we need to balance that with the underlying ethical um, context and principle of those technologies itself and really make a decision on whether there is a positive uh, benefit or whether the 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 payoff is benefit or if we're in a deficit thank you and you talk about we need to balance ethics and innovation so is there concrete steps because he said that you know we need to find ways where we can measure that it's really beneficial versus it's not so as a startup your resources are being very limited in what ways can you do this like what concrete steps that's a great question there is a kind of base level when we look at um, ethics and making decisions around ethical behavior, and that is compliance. And so when we look at regulation, legislation, and, and law, um, that's the, the base level, that's the ground level that we can, you know, take a look at what actions we can, we can make and how that might pay off. I think um, at a minimum, being compliant with any regulation is going to be a, a, a positive payoff in itself in that um, you know, you're avoiding um, any fines or, or any um, uh, penalties from not being compliant. There's also, if you are raising money or have raised money, there's also often um, a, a push or a pressure from investors to make sure that um, they're investing responsibly. And so those are two ways that you can kind of see a, a positive benefit or you can measure um, a little bit more tangibly if you're getting a benefit from acting ethically, um, mitigating the risk from non-compliance with regulation and also um, being able to attract uh, investors or, or, or um, outside. So uh, talking about investors, 
we know that nowadays uh, it matters more and more the the image of uh, companies uh, towards those investors and uh, investors take like are much more looking at uh, those kind of things so how can companies measure their progress in creating inclusive cultures and products um, and what metrics actually matter that's a great question i think the best way is to get started um, take a look at the current state what things you have going on what things have already been implemented how you're already making progress in those areas and document it um, that way as you continue to um, prioritize it and, and make investments in that area you can come back to it in the following year and really see the progress um, metrics are going to vary based on industry and on location and on various different uh, factors and so it will be important um, to, when you're, you're taking a view of your current state, um, using that data to then create some metrics or create some KPIs, um, and then you know, following up on it in, in the following year. Of course, there are, there are industry standards and benchmarks that you can also look to, but um, the best data, like we say, is, is kind of your, your first-hand data, and so, that would be a great place to start. Thank you. And I just want to look back at your, you know, your career. You're very accomplished. And throughout your career, like you're in the, you have a nonprofit organization that you're going to talk about later. And then you're also seated in the AI and ethics board in Canada. So you've championed for inclusive innovation throughout your career. So I'm just curious. What are the most significant obstacles you face in convincing traditional organizations that diversity and inclusion are key drivers of innovation? I think the biggest challenge has been quite actually con convincing um, organizations. And so really trying to build out a business case and sometimes not being able to build a, a business case and it really being about making a moral and ethical decision to do something that is right, even if you can't directly tie it to the bottom line or to revenue or, or um, those types of metrics, articulating why it's so important um, societally, organizationally, um, even if there isn't, like I said, you know, very uh, tangible metrics around, you know, why you should invest in inclusion why it should be something that is a part of um, you know a company's mission or, or its values and so that has been uh, a challenge and something else that's been a challenge is depending on the political um, the political current political winds or the 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 current landscape um, things like inclusion can either be popular or or dispopular and so it's staying steadfast and really committing to um, the values of inclusion, regardless of you know whether it's popular at the time or not. So um, I was also wondering, uh, what does resilience look like in a leader navigating ethically gray areas in tech innovation, especially when facing immense pressure to perform? Yeah there is this idea of integrity and that is doing the right thing when no one is looking and i think that that is so um is so key and is and is related to um the way that you conduct yourself uh and it has to be an individual and a personal decision because oftentimes in leadership you have the power or the influence um, over, you know, strategy, people, you know, and how things are run. And so there might not always be accountability. And so it's really important that when um, you create that internal accountability, but also that your peers are creating some sort of accountability um, so that the market can also regulate itself to some extent, right? We're not, you know, looking for some overseeing organization to say, you know, you've done something wrong as a leader or you've acted unethically, um, you know, having it drive from from a place internally and also from kind of, like I said, the, the market. Okay, uh, thank you very much.
So now we'll have our little surprise. So as for any of our guests, we'll play a little game. So it's basically one minute in which you have to answer as many questions as you can. Uh, it's only like, it's not that like difficult question. It's just like funny questions about uh, what is your favorite dish or um, which country is your favorite country to travel to, those kind of questions. So okay. Justin, whenever you're ready. So Miss Rose, whenever you're ready, we're going to start. Okay, ready. Okay. If you were a superhero, what would your weakness be? Um, my weakness would be crying, maybe. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> sensitivity. If you could be any age for a week, what age would you pick? 16. <laughs> What's the best gift you've ever received? Unexpected flowers. Oh, that's so sweet. If you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? Uneven distribution of wealth. Okay. What's the first app you open on your phone every day? My text messages. <laughs> Do you believe in aliens? Yes. What's your weirdest habit? My weirdest habit? Having sushi like every other day. Ooh. Again, that's the time's up. Okay, thank that you everyone for listening. So, Miss Rose, before we can go, the, is there something you want to promote so that people can join you in your projects? Yes, I'd love to tell you all about the new face of artificial intelligence, which is a new division of my nonprofit, the new face of inclusion. We're focused on um, educating and supporting non technical professionals um, that are interested in uh, AI ethics, safety, and governance. And so you can find us at www.thenewfaceofai.com. Thank you. So, do you have what ways can people join your? Is there a new project that you're working on? Because I know you have a nonprofit, and I know nonprofits are very involved in the communities. You always have something new. So, what's the latest big thing that you're working on right now? Yes. So actually, yesterday evening, we, we wrapped our first workshop series, which was AI in education. And so we are um, just getting started up. We are looking for volunteers, actually, and we are looking for funding. Um, and so if you are interested in supporting us on either of those sides, please definitely reach out. We would love to have you and we'd love to have a conversation. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rose, for being here. And for our listeners, thanks you once again and see you in your next episode. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.